Hello guys, um, we are back um, on the video tutorials for answers uh, and today we have a different analysis from the one we did last time. Last time we did a T-joint um, analysis, we did a welding between the column and um, a beam, uh, but this time we will do a different analysis, only with beam elements and shell elements. This is the bridge that I, um, I've uh, built here in uh, SpaceClaim. It's a simple bridge. It's a pedonal bridge, uh, only for people. Uh, no cars allowed here, of course. <laughs> um, and this is the main structure of the bridge. Uh, we have different cross sections. You can take a look here. Um, this, this. Um, these frames here are a uh, squared hollow section. I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, it's a square. Um, then we have eye beams in the floor and in the top. Yes. Uh, and we have what more? I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's basically it. And these frames here. Um, the main parts of the bridge are also from uh, I beam um, I beam elements. So uh, after designing the bridge, uh, after you you perform the sketch and everything else, what you need to uh, build this bridge, uh, we can take a look in mechanical because I've already imported the model. Uh, we can do some changes here, but um, this is the the view of the object once you import you import it um, to mechanical. These line elements here are turned into beams once you mesh the model. Uh, as you can see, we have here the the I beam elements. Um, here we have the hollow sections. You can look at these joints here. Um, keep in mind that you uh, have to perform a careful design in space claim in order to um, to fully um, to fully define these joints uh, and define them properly because it's very important. So this is the mesh um, in in mechanical. Um, I've just performed uh, face meshing in the shell element because I wanted it to be uh, an all quad mesh. I have quadrilaterals method here. Uh, no connections because everything is bonded. Uh, we have shell and beam so we don't have solids, we don't need to perform um, connections. Uh, we have the different uh, cross sections here, the different geometry and the material for that, it's a structural steel. It's general structural steel. Um, so what I've performed here, um, it was a simple analysis to see uh, how the bridge would behave um, in two different scenarios. The first one was just with the standard third of gravity, so its own weight. How would the bridge uh, behave with its own weight? And then I've applied also a pressure to see how it would behave if a hundred people of um, 70 kilograms were crossing um, the bridge. We will look uh, into these two scenarios, but first I'm gonna suppress um, this pressure. So we just have a fi uh, st the standard third of gravity, so the own weight of the bridge acting uh, on it. And we have two fixed supports. Um, we have the, the points um, in the limits of the bridge. Uh, so let's run the analysis because this is very quick to solve. Um, we just have shell and beam elements, so it's it's very quick to analyze this. So we have a total deformation of two millimeters. So you can see that the bridge um, can handle it, its own weight perfectly. Um, yeah, it's it's what I what I was expecting. Um, you can look that uh, in the deformations, of course, that the, the main deformation is in the shell element, which is the floor of the bridge, represents the floor of the bridge. 
then we can take a look in the equivalent stress in the shell elements because ANSYS only gives us equivalent stress, only the stress um, in elements that are made of shell or solid. Um, of course, that the biggest stresses are in, in here the fixed supports. That's where the tension. That that's where the stresses are bigger. Um, yeah, so no problems. It's twenty four mega megapascal. Um, it's nothing. Basically nothing. Then ANSYS gives us the possibility to take out the actual force. Um, these four, uh, these four. Um, uh, solutions here uh, that I've requested uh, to ANSYS, you can uh, get them by going to BIM results and you can select um, the ones you're interested in. So the axial force, we have 12 kilonewtons here, of course, it's the, um, you can I here we can take a look at the very interesting thing. The, um, the beams that are placed in the vertical have higher axial forces yes that's that's not a new of course and the ones uh, who are curved or um, oblique to the other um, to the other beams have lower axial forces so we have a, a good distribution of the of the forces uh, through the whole bridge so 12 kilonewtons here in the top it's nearly 13 kilonewtons but it's fine we don't have um, any problem with it um, then we can also take the, the bending moment and of course that the bending moment is higher in the three beams that are in the middle of the, the bridge supporting the floor of the bridge uh, but actually the maximum one it's here here the in in this joint, um, yeah, everything everything looks fine, no problem. We have um, three point two times ten to the six, but you can't forget that we have newtons per millimeter, so um, that's actu actually that's fine. Then we have the shear force too, and we have six kilonewtons of shear force, um, almost seven. Uh, that's not a problem either. It can handle it with no problems. Um, and then we have a very interesting tool that is the stress tool, in which ANSYS will give us the safety factor um, of the of the elements. Um, I assume that you know what the safety factor is, so uh, there is no problem uh, here in our our model everything looks fine we don't have zeros we don't have ones we have a safety factor of eight so it's it's perfectly fine okay so we uh, we performed an analysis only to the bridge's weight how would the bridge behave with its own weight now let's assume that a hundred people try to cross the bridge at the same time so let's Perform the analysis again now with the pressure. Um, and now we have different deformations. Uh, before we had two millimeters, now we have three point three millimeters. It's not um, it's not too much either, so it's fine. We can look that the equivalent stress got bigger too. Um, but it's 39 megapascal, so it's almost nothing. A hundred people could perfectly cross this bridge. The axial force increased a lot to 18 kilonewtons. Um, 18 kilonewtons in this part here. Um, it got bigger, but it's not very concerning I guess so it's no problem the, um, the bridge can basically handle everything but in, in this case um, we have to keep in mind that the axial force in um, this column here 
uh, in these beams uh, that behave like columns uh, are getting bigger um, and that's where uh, we have maxim forces now the total bending moment now the bigger total bending moment it's here yes so um, we can see that uh, the, br the bridge actually I'm gonna put this into auto scale so you can get a bigger uh, a best view of what would happen uh, we can see that uh, the the bridge would fail uh, from because of these beams here uh, the moment is too high on them of course that this is not a reality this is just the auto scale it's two uh, ten times so it's 200 um, we have a scale of 200 almost 200 um, so but yeah the the, the, the tendency it's, it's uh, for this behavior now the shear force well the shear force uh, it's not a surprise yeah it's the, the higher points allocated here um, in these joints from each side yes so it's not a surprise we can look at the safety factor and it decreases from 8 to 6 but still no problem now I have um, a pressure of um, 1.94 times 10 to the minus 3 megapascal which is very small but it's the weight of uh, 100 people with 17 kilograms now let's increase this pressure to see how the bridge would behave now let's imagine that we have 1 megapascal so it's a hundred times bigger than what we've put before now let's solve the model so you can look that we have now let's put this in true scale <coughs> so this is true scale now we have 500 millimeters 500 millimeters the equivalent stress is now of 6000 so now no the um, of course that the flow wouldn't resist to uh, the magnitude of the stress but we increased it a hundred times uh, the pressure is a hundred times bigger the axial force now it's whoa huh. 2.6 times 10 to the 6 Newton um, so of course that it didn't resist uh, and now let's look at the safety factor yeah and the safety factor it's the minimum one it's 0 0.04 0 0.04 yeah we have some parts here that have, that have 1.7 but of course that the structure would fall no doubt about it so guys um, I hope that you like this um, this video tutorial uh, this analysis um, this type it was this time it was a different analysis um, le let me know if you uh, would like to see uh, how uh, I modeled this uh, bridge um, or uh, give me ideas about analysis that you'd like to see in our channel uh, hope to see you in the future and I hope that uh, you have learned a bit more about finite element analysis thank you